and you have four fingers. So that's three lines. One in the middle and one on each side of it. So, And notice your fingers do not go down as far as your thumb. They actually go to the knuckle of your thumb. The smallest one, they all pretty much is a little bit, all of these lines are about the same length and they all go pretty much to the I would, not even to the knuckle. They go to about the, they go to about the, uh, see those three lines? They go to about the nail on your thumb. So assuming this is your thumb, here's your thumb. And this is the nail on your thumb. But it's, it's been out like this, so you can't really tell. So your fingers are going to just go here. There's going to be one in the middle and one on each side. Like that. They're pretty much going to the top of your thumb here. And I'll do the same with this one. One in the middle and one on each side. So I have four fingers. Now I'm going to take a tiny bit of stuffing, make sure I have about the same amount for both hands, and throw a bit more. Alright, and I'm going to put this down in there, just like I did with the foot. Come in! Yes! What do you need, Maria? Oh, okay. Okay, so you shove a little bit down here, here into the fingers, just like you did before. I'm not putting it in the thumb, just the fingers. I'm going to put a pin across there just to keep it there. And I'm going to do the same with this one. Just, where's the opening? Here it is. Just shove that stuffing down into the fingers. So shove it all the way down in here and put a pin across. And now I'm going to go over and I'm going to sew these. I'm just going to go straight lines sewing on each of the toes, each of the fingers. I've sewn across the toes. I've got a lot of threads to clip here. If I hit these with the steam iron, those marks would come right out. But right now, I don't care about that. All right, I take that pin out, and so I have toes. Toes there. Um, I start sewing here and go to the end, and then come back here to the end. It's a whole lot easier to do that than to try to go from the toe from this end in. It's easier to go from this end out. Just for your information. 
I find it that way. Um, my foot then holds down all the stuffing and it, it makes a better job. The same with the fingers. So I have to, all these jump stitches here I have to cut off. All right, so there's toes on that foot. Fingers, same thing. So, All right, so there's my hand. Um, all right, so we have to have a right and a left hand. And again, your thumbs are on the inside. Um, so in your arms, your thumb will be is up. So this will be, well, that's your leg. Uh, in your arms, it, your thumb is up. So this will be this side, this will be this side. The next thing we have to do is the magnets. Now, on the feet, the magnets don't matter. But on the where did I put those magnets? Just had them out here. Um, on the on the hand they do. What do I mean by that? Well. Most of the things, if you're putting flowers on the feet and you want to put a magnet there, the magnet, will, it, the the washer which will be attached to your flowers, would would um, attach to the magnet regardless of which side of the magnet is up. If you want something, put something in the hand again. It doesn't really matter that much which side is up. However, if you want to put your hands together in prayer like that they and for them to hold come here darling so I mean the idea of this doll was to make her into be able to be used to her for the Blessed Mother or for a saint or something so there's magnets in her hands and she can keep her hands together in prayer like that because they will they are attracted to each other but, so you need to have the ones in the hand that they can, they can be attracted to each other. So here's two magnets, and see they're attracted. Ah. But if you put them this way, they're repelled. So you need, to, you need to find the sides that are attracted and, yeah, and lay them down. You, you can mark them with a pen. I had maybe chalk here. 
So I've marked these two magnets with uh, chalk on this side because that's the side that attracts to each other. So that's also going to be the side that will go in the palm of the hand. So if this is this hand, it will go uh, up in this palm. So I'm going to do, I'll put that in. Slide it down to where I have stuffed the fingers. So that's in the palm here now. And I'm going to put a little bit of stuffing behind it to pat out the back of the hand and also to hold it a little bit in place. Make sure it goes behind the magnet and not in front of it. You should still be able to see, feel it. You also want to get some stuffing into that thumb area. thumb. And there's, I can feel it here in the palm right here. You can kind of see it a little bit. I'll put some more stuffing. From this side of it. So that it gets, now I have some stuffing on this side of it so it's more centered in the palm and it should attract the other magnet. With the, by the chalk, the chalk size should match. I'm going to put a pin here just to keep it where I want it. Um, while I do the same thing with the other one. Now, so this one is the thumb up on this side. So this is the thumb up on this side that makes this the palm. So I want to put this in here. Chalk, chalk mark up down here in the palm. Pushing it all the way down to the fingers. And now I'm going to put some stuffing behind it and around it into the thumb. Just like I did with the other one. some stuffing on top of it and I don't want that. Pull it back down a minute. Now I have it in the palm. And now I need to put a little bit in the thumb. And on this side of it. So it stays centered in the palm.
And I'm just going to put a pin there too. Well, I'm going to wait a second. I'm going to put a little bit more stuffing in there, but you can see now that the hands will. All right. My magnet is now upside down. See the hands won't go together, so I have to pull it out. When I when I pulled it out to reposition it, I must have flipped it over. So I'll bet you the chalk side is no longer up. Nope, it's upside down. And so you know that you do want to test that after you have it in double test it to make sure. Because otherwise you'll it'll happen just like my hands did there. They won't they won't clasp together. They will actually push themselves apart. All right, so now they do clasp together. So I'm going to finish putting some stuffing in the arms up to the hole. And then I need to put the bobbin in the top. So I'm putting enough stuffing up to the opening here. I think it's just a little bit more will do. Do the same with this one. Now that magnet's not going to go anywhere. Now I need to do the bobbin. Now that's there should be four bobbins. Okay, so you need four bobbins or four wooden balls. Four wooden balls like this. Uh, the, th the only thing they have in common is they're both the same size and they have holes straight through them. Now you could use the wooden ball up here in the, and where it would go would be up in the top of this arm up here, up in this section up here, um, and you have to have the holes facing out on both sides. Uh, I prefer bobbins only because they're flatter, and this this is going to be working in this section here, and where the bobbin being flatter kind of goes a little further in, but not necessarily. I mean, look, the ball does go there as well. But another reason I like it is uh, getting, the, getting the hole straight isn't as hard as trying to find it with the, with the ball, but it's not, it's not that difficult with the ball. Right, I'm just putting a little stuffing around 
the inside of this bobbin just so there's stuffing there and I'm going to slip it inside this arm and push it up here into the top. Now, uh, it doesn't go all the way to the top. You, um, and that's why I put a little stuffing behind it. Uh, it actually needs a little bit more stuffing there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this down a little bit. I think I'll take it out actually, and put some just a little bit of stuffing there in the very top. It's because this is narrow and curved. Um, it could your bobbin can fit all the way up there. It just depends upon how much seam allowance you left in that area. So I'm pushing some stuffing right up in the very top. Then I'm going to push the bobbin all the way up in there to the top. Right there. And now I'm going to continue stuffing this whole, stuffing the arm here. until the stuffing is running out just like we did with the back and the thighs and the other parts of the doll. And that's about it, right like that. Now I have to I have to sew this closed. And as I sew it closed, I might put a little bit more in there. It's it's a little bit soft right there at the at the closing place. So I'm just going to put this aside and I'll do the same thing with the other arm. I'm going to put a little bit of stuffing up in the very top. And then I'm going to put some stuffing around the bobbin here. You had old bobbins that had rotted thread on them or something you could you could just leave the thread on them uh, won't matter and now I'm going to shove this in here through the hole and back and up into the top Okay, so there's the top, and now I'm going to continue putting more stuffing, and as I put stuffing in, I really want to push that up as high as it'll go. Okay, and again, I'm probably going to put a little bit more as when I come to close this, just shove a little bit more in here. Because if I can stick my fingertip in there, then it's not stuffed enough. Let 
the stuffing should be about popping out but not just so much that it distorts. That's ready to close. Those two are ready to close. Now, for the legs, you're going to do the same thing. Um, this time, you want the magnet again on the top of the foot, not on the sole. So, um, I'm going to put the mag, and it doesn't matter this time which side the magnet's up. Um, so, I'm going to put a magnet down in the foot. And run it into the near the toes, the top of the foot near the toes. Now you have some stuffing in there, so try and get it in on top of that stuffing. It's a long way to get your finger in. If you have small fingers, it might work. Um, I can feel it, but I feel a little stuffing on top of it here, so I'm just going to keep working at it until I get the stuffing to come to the underneath it. And the magnet on the top. See the magnet, but there's still some stuffing there. All right, that's better. Now I got it. All right, so now I'm going to put some stuffing behind it so it stays on the top. I hope. still on the top. Okay, and I now I'm going to keep finish stuffing the foot and move up the leg just like I do with the arm to the opening and then I'm going to do the bobbin the same way in the top here. As you stuff it, form your foot a little bit. You don't want your foot round. You want it flat on the bottom. So push down on it so that it is flat. Make sure it goes into your stuffing goes into your heel. And just keep coming up the leg.
Okay, I just got a, just about got that. Okay, so I've got the lower leg to about here. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the top. Um, I don't need to put stu uh, stuffing all the way up into the top because this bobbin will definitely fit all the way up there. So I'm just going to stuff around the bobbin. Put it up into that top of the leg there and then stuff around it the the sides of it I put a lot of stuffing around it so the bobbin itself so it, it should stuff it should fill in the upper part here. You want it, when you stuff it, you don't want to put stuffing on top of the holes. So this is as wide as it's going to be at the top where the bobbin is. And I, I put my hand there, I hold it with my thumb so that as I stuff this up here, it's not going to go up on top of that bobbin. Um, the rest of the leg you want pretty fat, but that part is your joint and so your knee and so no you don't want that to be excessively fat there so right, so this leg is pretty full but if you look at it see it's narrow here at the top it winds out into the the, the calf And as I close this again, I may put a little bit more in here because I feel it doesn't, it's not bad though. It's pretty solid, just a tiny bit I can feel right here. All right, so that can be closed. I do the same with this one. Again, magnet, magnet to the foot. Flatten it out, get it on top of the foot, by the toes, on top of the stuffing. Alright. The only thing I feel on top of it is the seam and that's the way it should be. So now I'm, I'm going to put some stuffing behind it.
So here's my magnet. I can feel it right here. And I'm going to now continue stuffing the foot and up to the leg again to that the entry hole. Make sure you get your heel, your heel well stuffed, and your foot flat. The top of the foot can be rounded, but the bottom of the foot has to be flat. up to the opening. Now I'm going to go to the do the bobbin. So here's my last bobbin. And I'm just going to wrap the bobbin stuffing. I try to pull it as tight as I can around it. It's hard to pull the stuffing tight. Um, get as much as you can. I right, see it's kind of overstuffed here. That's the part that's going to go up into the the top top of the, the leg. So you can kind of feel it. Now I'm going to put some on each side of the that bobbin, filling in the, the sides, this side, this side, and this side. A good amount there. So now I'm going to finish stuffing the leg and again I'm holding I'm holding the bobbin here in the top as I stuff up there so that it doesn't I don't lose my holes. I don't want stuffing on the sides on these sides where the holes I don't mind having them on these sides but not on the sides where, the, you, where you can feel the holes. So I can feel the holes there and I've got my finger there. And I'm, that's one of the reasons why I like the bobbins because with the ball it tends to roll around and it's a little bit harder. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. 
it's a little bit harder to find and keep the hole in, in, in the spot you want it. So there's, there's what it looks like now. It's not closed yet. And if I hold up to the light, I can actually see where the hole is in the bobbin. And I'm going to. All right, so now I'm ready to use a needle and thread and close it. Close all of these. So. Again, using double threaded, and as I close it, I may put more stuffing in it. So again, I'm just going to whip stitch across. When I get the, it about half closed, I'm going to check the stuffing again, see if I need to move anything. Okay, that's half closed. The leg looks good. I'm going to push some more down in there and put a little bit more up in here. If you get a little bit of some of the hairs of the stuffing sticking out, don't worry about them. They will, they'll get pulled off just from using it. Um, it. All right, so so there's the leg. Now this is going to get attached here. I want to show you how it, it gets attached. All of them will be attached the same, exactly the same way. The, now you need your you need your string. I'm going to use coach crochet thread. I'm not going to use the nylon thread. I like crochet thread. It's extremely, extremely strong. 
um, I mean, I could use this, but I don't, um, I don't like the way it unravels and the fact that I'd have to also burn the ends of it. So I'm just going to I'm going to use crochet thread. You also need a needle with a good size eye, but it can't be like a a craft needle. It has to be sharp. Sharp enough. Um, both of these would work. This is a little I think this this one's a little bit sharper. It, it doesn't matter. Just you just got to be able to get your thread through it. So I'm gonna go with the and it probably will need the needle thread or for this because it can. There's there's one way to thread thick yarn or crochet cotton embroidery cotton through a needle is to fold to fold the end of it. So you have a loop and push the loop through it instead of trying to push the end of the thread through it because this is several plies and it has a tendency to separate. Now this time you do not want double thread. You just want single thread and you want about doesn't really matter, but about 12 inches is good. Let me do this 12 inches here. All right, and you're going to start, you have two points here on your doll. You're gonna start with the inside point, go through it. This is why you need to have a sharp needle. Uh, craft needle will not work for this the, with the dull points or a tapestry needle. They won't, they don't generally work for this. So you want to go through here till you've got both of your threads through. Leave a long tail here. Now go through, make sure you're let, you've got the correct, you go through the hole in the bobbin. Then you go through this point. And you want to go from the inside of the point to the outside of the point. You can leave the leg loose, but make sure you have all the thread. Now, when you cut, you're now you're going to go back. The first one has to be. You don't want to go into the same hole. You want to go next to it, above it, or below it, but very close to it, but not not in the same hole. Doesn't matter if you come out in the same hole on the other side, but you don't want to go in on the same hole here. Okay. Once you do that, it tightens up. Now you want to go through again through the leg, through the through the bobbin. You can do this in the same hole if you want. Doesn't have to be, but won't hurt. This is the only one that can't be in the same hole. Now you want to pull this up as tight as you can get it. You'll tighten it again in a second. And now you want to go through this one. Again, you want to come out at a different point than where you came in. So the outside ones have to be in different places. The inside ones can be in the same, the same holes. Now with th these two threads, you want to pull them as tight as you can. So they lock around your, your leg there. And then you want to tie a knot. You want to go under the thread twice. And the reason for that is it makes a good lock stitch. In other words, it won't loosen up. See, like now, if you just done it once and you let go of this, it would loosen, but this won't loosen. Now you want to do that again. Once, 
twice. And well, now I'm just going to do a regular knot. And I'm going to cut that off. So now you have one leg connected. And you can see that it will bend. Now you'll do the same thing with this leg, with this arm, and with this arm. They're all the same. So uh, you don't need to watch me do those, but I'll do one arm just to, just to show you. This is the arm for this one. Again, the thumb is up. The magnet should be in the palm of the hand. And I need to close this. Okay, not it. And about twelve inches and my needle. Okay, so this is the one arm for here, this side. So I'm going to go through this point. a long tail, go through, make sure you have the hand the right, the correct direction, go through the bobbin, and then through this point. Now I want to come back again on the outside you're going to go in a different place than where you came out but it doesn't matter where on the inside. See that locks that and then I'm going to come through the inside and through this one. Now, using these two threads, you can uh, you pull it till you get it up where you want it. It's pretty tight. Now, you want to do two loops through twice and make sure you have tight and then do once, twice more and then a regular knot. And 
So there's one arm and one leg. And now we do the other one, the other side the same way. So we're going to sew Okay, and so there is your doll, complete, double, able to move in pretty much any position you want. All you need now is her head moves, uh, her arms move, she can fold her hands, um, you can do whatever you want with her. Now, if you plan to put her on a stand, this stand is it doesn't have to be this big. I've used smaller ones, so like from Dollar. This came from Dollar Tree, but it cost five bucks as opposed to the smaller ones which are a dollar but this one from the top from here down is um, ten eleven twelve and a half inches it's twelve and a half inches it goes down into the base about this is about a quarter of an inch I mean about half an inch yes it's a half an inch so it goes down into the base about a quarter of an inch um, what you need to do is probably is what I do is put the doll on the stick come on there you go put the doll on the stick now she can go down further than that, but you don't want her, you want her standing up straight. And then you want to measure, let's say the stick is to this point and then add a quarter, extra quarter of an inch on it. Drill your hole that deep and then glue it in place. Um, the whole point of this is just so that she stands up. You don't have, she doesn't have to have the stick all the way up as far as it goes in the tube. Uh, this that would be this far, in which case you see her legs are bent, but I mean, maybe you want her to look like she's running or something. I don't know. Uh, but you measure and cut your stick afterwards. I usually cut when I'm when I'm stuffing the doll, I usually have the sticks a little long uh, so that I can cut them afterwards when I know exactly how tall the doll is. Okay, so uh, and she's ready for a wig. I have gotten wigs from fabric This, this particular wig, which is a synthetic mohair, is very nice. It's a nice part, a little wavy. Uh, that came from Funny Unicorn on, it's an Etsy store. And again, that's, these are size nines. Um, I've gotten some from Fabric Direct Crafts, which is what these are. Um, I think I didn't like this one because it's it's a layered wig. Yeah, this is the layered one. Um, I like simply a nice middle part. Um, so it's not one that I'm going to use. The factory direct craft ones run about, for a nine inch wig, run about 
six to seven dollars. The ones from that funny unicorn I want, were much more than that, but then also they, these are synthetic and the others were um, synthetic, these are synthetic mohair and the others are synthetic mohair and these are just plain synthetic. There is a difference. Uh, if you want, if this is for a little girl who's going to be playing with this, then you probably want a synthetic one because she'll want to comb it. Synthetic mohair can be combed and styled, but you don't want to do it often because it will shed a certain amount. Where plain synthetic, plain synthetic can be combed and styled and just like regular doll hair because it's kind of like, like the same kind of hair you find on a Barbie doll or any other doll. So it's a bit wavier than the other one. It's not quite so long, but this is better for a little girl who's going to be playing with it where this one is better. This wig is better for a doll that's going to be just on display. Notice how very long it is as opposed to the length of this one. So. Your dolls may not come out exactly 18 inches or they may come out shorter or longer depending upon how much seam allowance you took. Notice one of these is a little, slightly bit taller than the other, and yet they're the same pattern. All right, so and there you have it. Uh, next classes will be on how to make clothing for this doll. First, the underwear, and then some gowns. And I will also have um, cut and sew versions of these both the doll and the clothing on Etsy, as well as the patterns on Etsy. They're not up yet. You'll have to watch for those. I have to, have to do a little bit more work on the directions for the doll before I can post it. So, 